My talk today is solving the cloud native security paradox. So a bit about who I am. My name is Robert Sarchia. It looks like Sriracha. It's okay. If you, if, you, if you see my name and you say Sriracha, I answer to it as well. My day, I am the director of technical and community marketing at a company called Suzusa. If some people here have heard of it, others probably haven't. I'm an open source contributor. I contribute to Helm, is the, the project that I uh, hang out with my friends on, and we code and contribute to that. I'm a CNCF ambassador. Uh, I'm a wargaming nerd, so if anyone knows what Warhammer 40K is, that's, uh, that's kind of my jam as of late, and I'm a dad of two. <clears throat> so we're constantly asked this question, is my software safe, right? And if you're asking your boss that question, what do you say, right? And here, how many people think your software's safe? Anyone? Good, because if you, I mean, it's not safe, but if your boss asks you, is it safe? You're probably gonna tell him, yeah. You're gonna say, yeah, boss, it's safe, right? But nobody here feels that their software's safe. So why are we concerned about security leaks or security lately? Well. It's not lately, it's been ongoing, but it's more prominent in the news more, now more than ever because after two years, Lock4J is still impacting our community, right? It's still impacting customers, it's still impacting businesses. SolarWinds was so impactful, the US government is suing them. That's how bad it was. Um, and you know, here in Europe, I'm sure that there's probably lawsuits. I have not found any, but I'm, I'm pretty confident there's one or two for it. And the, X, the XZ exploit sneaks into Linux, right? Now, this is Open Source Summit, and this is a community-focused summit. So, well, what about the community, right? Anytime there's a security breach for any reason, it's a loss of trust on the project, right? If you're a contributor to that project, now you have more pressure on you than you had before because companies depend on you. They might not pay you, that's not why you do it, but there's now more pressure. As a contributor, if there is a vulnerability, and that would put a lot of pressure on anybody. It also puts, uh, it detracts from contribution. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to contribute to something that I, I think is just, you know, not, it's probably it's not, it's not maintained well. The main, what are the maintainers doing? But, but these things happen, right? So it does detract from that. And it's not sustainable for the long term, right? So when you think about it, if there's a security you know, breach or vulnerability, if it hits, it does impact the community as well as the businesses. So what does safety mean today in the cloud native space, right? And you're gonna get, and I hate to say buzzwords, but you, hear, you see these buzzwords, right? Zero trust security model. We have this at work, we call it new vector. We, tr we, we, we jokingly call it we have trust issues, right? Because we do, we trust nothing in our clusters, and we go with it. There's perimeter-based security, there's sec su secure supply chain, o the OS OCI spec compliant, Salsa compliance, FIPS compliance. How many people know what FIPS is here? No one? I know you know. If you didn't know, we're gonna have a conversation after this talk, and many more. But I'm gonna talk a few, I'm gonna make a few points on su supply chain security, uh, the OCI spec compliant, Salsa compliance and FIPS. So I threw buzzwords at you. You're probably lost and confused, and so, so am I. But what does this actually mean to, you know, to be secure, right? Well, when you look at your pipelines for code, you're going to have to maintain multiple pipelines. But for building, for scanning, for updating and maintaining your code before you deliver So how did we at SUSE start solving this? And what, what did we do to start improving this? And we looked at a few things. There was, I don't want to say trivial, but there were smaller, low-hanging fruit that we addressed. And we you know, looked at it and said, hey, we can, ad we can adopt that. And there was one thing that we saw as a Linux-based company <coughs> with containers. We had an issue even internally with our base container images. Because when we, you know, SUSE bought Rancher, that's public knowledge. We bought New Vector, public knowledge. 
Um, we just recently bought a company called StackState, and our base container images were multiple OSs, right? Sometimes multiple versions of the same OS, and all of them had different configurations. So as they're coming into our family, we were looking at our container images, and it's, it's pretty vast and it's pretty uh, wide across the board. So we looked at fixing that. So how did we do it? Well, we did something that I think a lot of people try to do, but we feel we kind of did it well. We created our own base container images. I am not saying that anyone, that that is the route that they should go off and try today because I've seen the work that our team does to keep our base container images up to date. And they'll do, they do the Lord's work in my opinion because it's a very thankless job to keep these packages up to date. So insert the foundations of what we call SLE BCI or base containment images and SLE stands for SUSE Enterprise Linux. We created tools that allow you to create and customize container images. We have multiple architectures that we, we had to do this for. So for AR64, uh, x86, PPC64 LE, and S390X. Um, the cool part is, and I'll talk about this in a minute, our EULA for these container images um, allows you to uh, redistribute. So you can use our images and redistribute it. We encourage you to do it because it's making the internet safe. And for the enterprise, these con containerized uh, containers are based off our SUSE Linux enterprise packages. <clears throat> They're security audited and built with a, with a trusted third party certified way. And there's option for enterprise support. So if you're a company and you're like, hey, do I need support for that? You might. But if you're an open source project, do you need support? Maybe, but that's up to your project. So we have three types of containers that we built and support. We have our general containers, we have our development containers, and application containers. So general containers. We have five or six of them, um, and these are Sleep ECI 15, which is based off of Celeste 15, um, SP5. We have init, minimal, busy box, we have micro, and we have many more on this. The difference in between these are um, the size and where you start. So busy box is just that busy box. Um, we have minimal, then we have micro, and then we have init. Um, we actually recommend that if you're starting with this, the micro one is where you want to start and then expand into the ones that have more packages. And don't attempt to, you know, you can attempt to have packages, but start at the very smallest point you can and then kind of build up to where you need it. Uh, I think the largest one we have is a NIT and that has system D in it. Um, if you have, what did we call them? Traditional workloads? Where's Frederick? Um, he said, if you have traditional workloads that need multiple processes running, you can use that. In the cloud native sense, we wouldn't do that natively. That's just, that's, that's taboo in our world. So next, we have our development containers. And these are the ones I'm particularly excited about because we have two types. We have the SDKs and we have the runtimes. And how many people in here develop on multiple languages for like, like you do multiple languages? multiple versions, so you're like a Java developer with you know eight, nine, so you guys know the use case for that. And so where I enjoy these, and I do this with Helm, is I have a particular version of Go that I use, um, and my development environment is all in a container. So with VS Code, I spin it up, I will attach um, my work uh, stream to it, and I will build my code within a container, and all of that is there. And it's nice because what, if I have to use a specific version, it's not, if we're not on latest for whatever reason, I keep up to date with that and I'm not, or not clobbering over my environments with that with relative ease. Inversely, now I have a runtime as well. So you can develop something in Java or I say .NET 8 on that SDK and you can work on that code and you can have that runtime and deploy it right there for you as well. So we support Rust, uh, Python, Java, or OpenJDK, I should say. Um, don't want to get in trouble. Uh, .NET 8, um, there's .NET 7, and um, Node, and a few others for the development containers. 
And then internally, we needed some application containers. So we have a few that we use, um, like MariaDB, Nginx, Postgres, SQL 15, and, and a lot more. And we'll talk, I'll talk about that anyway. So with the base container images, we needed a way to get, to get them out to the mosses. And how we did that is we created our own registry that we have. Um, our customers can go there. There's two types uh, that, we, that we have up there. We have the base container images that are for um, our customers. They can go up there and pull them down. And are they very similar? Yes, they are. The difference are in, in the EULA. And then we have a redistributable, right? So you, as a member of this community, you're looking for a safe, secure, base container image to use, you can go up there right now and you can use it, right? But if, you're, if this is blocked at work and you're like, hey, I can't, I can't get to it because this is not allowed by our firewalls, we took the time and we're also available in Artifact Hub. And we, took, we, we, we try to mirror everything in there and they're usually about the same day. So when they release one, they get them both. Um, my co the colleagues over there in the BCI project are pretty uh, are, are pretty good about keeping those features up to date. Questions so far? A sip of water here while you guys ponder a question. Okay, we'll continue. So other features: we have automatic updates for vul when we find vul vulnerabilities. Um, sometimes I'm on the phone with them, and we will watch what happens when we find it, and they fix it. Um, comprehensive documentation. I am their biggest critic on documentation because when they tell me they have something, I don't talk to them about it. I don't talk to our engineers. I go to the documentation and I try to work through it because if I can't work through it, I know you can't work through it. So I complain about that a lot. Um, and they will tell you that I complain about it a lot. So I can tell you it's pretty comprehensive. And if anyone of you guys find it, reach out on Twitter and find me and I will, uh, I will uh, help clarify it for you or have them clarify it in the documentation. We have an active user community. Um, these are people who are using the, the container images now. They're in our Rancher user Slack. Um, very big community over there um, asking questions. We're documenting it. Um, we have GitHub issues open for this. So if you have, you know, you find an issue, please report it when you're there. Um, it, all, of our pack, all of our base container images are extendable with the SLE extensions, um, but that's with our subs subscription. So if you're a customer, if you need that, that's there, you can do that. Um, but if you're a community user, you're probably not doing that. If you are, I'm surprised. These are tested all prior to release, um, and they're tested, they're tested not only on our own operating systems, like OpenSUSE, uh, Tumbleweed, and Leap, and SLES, but it's also tested on Ubuntu and RHEL, and all those great uh, operating systems as well. And we test this also on Docker, Podman, and ContainerD. No questions. I'm just like flying through this. I figure you guys would like beat me up here. So let's talk about some of the compliance. We have Sigstore, Notary, Salsa Providence, um, this thing called S-Bombs for, for you guys who know about it. Um, and then we're FIPS 142 compliant. Um, and we're also 140-3, and that is per, uh, provincial at the moment. So that means we got the initial nod to it. Um, and then there's more paperwork to get to that 140.3, um, but we're working towards that. These images are in the Iron Bank. I know I'm in Europe, but the Iron Bank is the gov US government's way of, um, it's their, their registry. And so if it makes it there, um, the US government feels it's safe for you to use. So they're sitting there as well. But with that being said, I said we, we had to eat our own dog food with this, right? So where are we using this? Well, ranchers just using our sleep BCI images, our product new vector, right? And these are not just the community versions that are using it. These are the same versions that we ship to our customers because we believe in the, the security of those base container images. Um, the product that I've been talking about this week here at um, Open Source Summit is SUSE Manager. I've had a lot of conversations with it. It's a Linux management platform, and it, it is now being moved and containerized with SLE BCI underneath the hood. And our open source project Trento, if you're in the SAP realm, you should know what Trento is. It is a, uh, a management tool around um, SAP with SLES, and that's using SLE BCI. And there's many more in our edge unit that is using it. Um, I believe, what is it, Tim? Metal LB, and how many others that we have over there? The, everything's there, is it? So we're not only just putting this out there for us to say, hey, 
we're using it, we're encouraging everybody to use it because we have free access to all of our base container images. We want you to use it because I'll say it once and I'll say it again, friends don't let friends use Docker Hub. Docker Hub's great, but we're gonna, in my demo here, we'll do it. All right, so let's see if I can do this live. Escape this. All right. What are you guys seeing? Oh, you guys. There it is. I lost my mirror button, I apologize. All right, should see my slide deck here. All right, demo. So let's clear this. Now, with my with every talk I do, I actually will have the notes of the demo I do. So anyone wants to go try and do it, I put it on my GitHub. Um, so scroll down, and I'll show the ones I'd like to do. So we're gonna pull an image from our registry. My goodness, what's going on here? So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I use Rancher Desktop. It's not another one of our tools internally. It is a, a tool that lets you run des um, Kubernetes on your desktop, but it also supplies me with Docker. Um, or in this version, I think I'm using Moby, and sometimes it hangs up, but we'll, we'll try to get this up and running again. I don't install it because I don't need it. I just let Rancher Desktop handle it because it updates it for me and keeps it all up to date. So we'll give it a minute to try to spin this up and reestablish that connection. But if not, I can go back to the video I, I shot. Those are the services, and let's see if it starts. It's thinking about it. All right, so I pulled it down. Now we're gonna pull down the same image, and we're doing, for this example, I'm doing Python um, 3.11. We'll give it a minute. The internet here is not as fast as it is back home. I do apologize. You can see I tested this earlier. So as this is, well, it's done pulling now. So now we're gonna do, well, let's just run trivia against what we just pulled from Sleep ECI. Or, so we have, uh, nope. 
<laughs> told you the demo gods. I didn't sacrifice something today. I didn't sacrifice that 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 pastry down, uh, downstairs, and I should have. So this is obviously not gonna not gonna fathom work out for me, which is just fine. I can hide this out and then get back. I know I could I should have. All right. Let's just go back here. Actually, I can't do that. I'm gonna extend my I'm gonna extend my display, and then I can do that. Apologies. I was trying to do it live. There it is. All right, let's try this again. Awesome. Come on video, let's start. Don't embarrass me now. All right, I'm not gonna waste your time on that one. I do apologize, but it does work. You can do it, I can show you, but we'll move on. So what does that mean? What does security mean in the cloud native space? So if we take um, an example right here, we have, Four Helm charts, five containers, and that problem we, we, we talked about earlier, the base images are coming from multiple operating systems, multiple versions of the same operating systems, different configurations. And what does that look like? Well, here in this example, you have you know, a Helm chart and index repository. You have a few subcharts. Um, one of those subcharts are going out to an OCI registry. They're pulling images from there. Another Helm chart's pulling images from Docker, uh, from a Docker registry. And this causes a lot of uncertainty, right? Because do you know where all these assets are coming from, right? It's hard to keep up with it. There's a lack of standardization with this. You're pulling down an application, you're trying to install it. You can YOLO and pull a Helm chart and just try to do it. But with that lack of standardization, you're not knowing you know, where the issue is lying. Is it one container or is it another, right? And there's risk. You know, one, of these, what are the, one of these sources goes, goes away, right? And trying to maintain this is, 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 is a pain, right? And if you're looking at this going like, no one actually does this, do they? I'm like, I was surprised, but it, it, actually, it actually does happen. If you look at um, Apache um, API 6, um, and this is nothing against uh, you know, Apache <coughs> or the API 6 project or their team, but this is how they do it, right? And there is the Apache GitHub chart repository, and you have a Helm chart for that. You have three subcharts, and you're pulling everything from Docker Hub. And then you have the Benami chart over there for um, etcd. And this is a real use case, right? And I don't know how they maintain this, but man, that's, that's, that's brave. That's really brave um, for that. But it, it asks a lot of questions, right? If this is how they're doing it and how you'll see a lot of companies are doing it. What if we had a bad container in one of those o OCI registries, right? Or what if that Helm chart's pointing to a evil repository? And I say evil, but it's not, it could be nefarious, but we've seen that before and it's hard to keep up with that. Do you check every one of your Helm charts that you pull? You probably check the ones you write, but if you're like, hey, I need to install X, do you look at that? But could this be safer? Sure it could. 
if we take this, could we just make this all one and unified for people, right? So if they needed like Apache API 6, um, could they do it? Sure. If all of that's in one location and all of that is, you know, governed, managed, and t taken care of, it would be safer, right? So we kind of ate our dog food once again when we created the Rancher Prime application collection, which is a product for our customers to use that can go out there and we solved that. And we solved it using our base container images as a foundation for this product that we sent out. So we went out and we addressed the issue that we saw and we deliver that for customers. So not only were we using it and we're asking you guys to, to, to use you know, our base container images, but we're giving them to our customers as well. So I did talk that I do contribute to open source. Um, did you need to take a picture of that? Uh, no. Are you sure? I can go back, I don't mind. Um, but you wanna leverage dependency bots. Um, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So I, I do contribute to open source. Um, uh, you wanna use dependency bots and automate the updates as, as soon and as fast as possible. Um, Dependent Bot's the one we use on Helm, and I do recommend that you put those out there. Um, it does a, a fantastic job of keeping you up to date. Um, and then recently I started adding vulnerability scanning to some of our projects. Um, I did this uh, recently for Helm, Helm Map Kube APIs, and for Kubeborden. Um, I learned a lesson that you can't put this on every check-in because sometimes people check in documentation and um, it's not their fault that they found a vulnerability because the vulnerability is not in their documentation. It is actually in, it just ran a scan and found a vulnerability that was already in our code base. So I had to adjust that. And what I did was anytime a new package is added, so in Go, it's the go.sum file, anytime that changed, I wanted to know, right? Like, was there a vulnerability added, right? Um, the next, um, we do an interval check, right? So even if we're not working currently on it, if you know how open source works, um, it's kind of like a burst of action on days that people have a time to work on it. So there's days that it's a lull and there's not much going on there, but we wanna do. So there's like an interval check that we put onto these projects. So if a vulnerability is found on a Tuesday, we know to jump on it on a Monday. So for our open source projects, that's a, a fantastic way for how we address the issue itself. All right, so final thoughts since my demo did not work. I'm a little ahead on time and no one has questions. Um, we offer these base container images. We build them so you don't have to. They're secure, they're up to date. They're based on our enterprise grade Linux uh, product called uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise. There's some links here. I do provide this afterwards um, in a PDF um, where you can find more documentation on our SLE BCI project our GitHub repository with a fantastic uh, community there with GitHub issues. If you find anything, we heavily encourage you to you know, open an issue. Um, we do address that um, and it is monitored and maintained. So we, there is, there's bodies behind it. I look at that every day um, along with the team itself. There's our registry. Um, it's registry.susa.com. Uh, you can go there right now. You can go check it out. And then we have our application collection for some of those people who are using our Rancher, uh, our Rancher product lines. And then lastly, I had the link um, for our, the Sleep BCI demo that I was attempting to do that apparently the, I just can't do on this uh, Wi-Fi here. Um, so you can go check that out and you wanna do it yourself. And with that, I am done because I don't have, my demo did not work. So I'm here for questions, comments, concerns. Wow, really? So I just have a comment. Uh, sure. So I understand what you said. You should all advertise this room and of course, you're pushing for severe to know one. But one of the concerns that uh, what, one of the issues that we have is that, uh, as you said, uh, for AP6, uh, uh, you say, OK, let's, let's use to the everywhere on AP6, but are, are we sure that uh, how we can be sure that at the end of the day, this is not a world registry? Uh, Inside, uh, inside the Kubernetes cluster to be sure uh, that uh, 
the registry screen that we are going through are the, the ones that we, we must have. Mm -hmm. you, you've talked about uh, six store and stuff like that, uh, but to be honest, it's very hard to, to use. Uh, the vector uh, can be also uh, uh, a way to, to, to solve that, but mainly, uh, my, in my opinion, the main issue uh, today is to be sure that the image you are using are actually the, the image we think we, are, we want to use. So uh, I'm not sure I'm clear, but to, to be sure that through all the mirror proxies and stuff that we have internally in our, in our companies, mm -hmm. that the image at the end of the day is really the one uh, from a registry that Susan has come from, uh, for example. And sometimes maybe we think it's from a registry from Susan has come, but it's actually because we have to walk through one, two, three more or caching mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. We are not 100 percent sure of that, and that's where we are in our industry are the issue. So is it the network that you guys go through with all the hops? That you, that, that yeah, and uh, also a lot of cash because sometimes uh, the internet access is blacklisted uh, you know, for almost everything. So we have proxies that are allowed to, to cash stuff and so on. But when we are on the tip tip in the network, mm -hmm. we, we try to retrieve an image. But this image, it's very hard to be sure that the image is uh, still has the signature and still has the stuff like that. I don't know how the uh, the signature would. I'll have to get back and check on how the signature works with your caching internally. That would be, that's a, that's an interesting concept because when I see people using it and they're looking for that, they don't cache it. They pull it, and it's part of a process that do. And so they do that. They they wouldn't cache it. They would just go direct. You know, for that use case. Um, but it has to be. It, it is available because we have customers who do it in an air gap instance, and so they know when they pull it, but when they pull it for the air gap, they'll build it up in, a, in you know, we have a, a project called Edge Image Builder, and so that's a way that they will build it, and then they deploy it through an air gap instance like that, um, and that's how they maintain that, that, that level of security to that demarcation point, where you're saying, you, I don't know how that cache would work, so I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer that question. It is a good, it is a, a good use case that, to be concerned of, but I would have to, Get back and look at that for yeah. caching. We have two kinds of images you now. We, we are deploying our own uh, <coughs> code. Mm -hmm. We can use uh, the, the, the image. Uh, usually, we can go directly to, to, to any registry to, to take the base image and then uh, sure. build our code on it. So, this one is all, let's say. Now, we've seen people. We've seen people actually use images where they pull them from us, they put them in their own registry, and then that's their their that's their cache. It's not like a, a file cache where they've done before, and so they they will trust. They'll have the trust in between the two registries. They'll pull from one, and then they'll, they'll pull from. Then everyone pulls from the internal registry, and so I think that's how they get away with it without a, a level of caching where it's I have this here, and then that's effectively you know mapping into a, what a would 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 be a cache, right? a lot of cash. You sound like a bank. You sound like a bank. Is, is it a bank? It's a. That's a terrible. That was a terrible dad joke. I apologize. I won't do that again. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'll be at the Sousa booth. If you guys want to stop by, say hi, grab a plushie because they came in today. Um, we have the Sousa. Uh, I should have brought one up, but the, we have we do have the the not Cal Million, but the Chameleon plushies down there. Um, and thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you.